Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, and today is Tuesday, a little past 12:30, and we're going to talk about uh, blood sugar and what causes fatigue uh, related to blood sugar. So last week we talked about anemia, meaning lack of oxygenation uh, to your tissues and your brain, which causes fatigue. So I'd like you to go back and watch that one. And number two today is about dysregulation of blood sugar. Not just high blood sugar, but low blood sugar, right? Your brain needs two things, right? It needs oxygen, it needs glucose, and one more thing is activation or stimulation, right? Visual input, exercise, uh, math, reading. Your brain needs stimulation in order for its uh, synapses to grow. So today we're gonna to talk about blood sugar or dysregulation of blood sugar. I think the first thing we need to do is look for signs of blood sugar dysregulation, right? So if we have, let's say, high blood sugar or insulin resistance or prediabetes or diabetes, these are the signs that you want to look for, okay? Fatigue after meals. Crave sugars. Even after you eat sweets, you still crave sugars. Increase in waist size, so your hip to waist ratio will change. You will increase urination or frequency of urination. Your increased thirst and appetite. And then you also have difficulty losing weight. So sometimes when you get on an exercise program, you're like, nothing is changing, I'm exercising. Nothing is changing. But it might take a month or two months for you to start to really notice changes because your body's uh, metabolism needs to change. So those are your signs for high blood sugar. Okay, let me just recap that again. Fatigue after meals, crave sweets. When you have sweets, you, it doesn't satisfy you and you crave more. Increase in waist size, increase uh, frequent urination, uh, appetite, and uh, thirst, and then difficulty losing weight. Also, people who have insulin issues is when you have a heavy meal, you tend to fall asleep. Um, right after dinner, you go sit down in front of the TV and you're out. And you wake up 30 minutes later, an hour later, and then you can't go back to bed again. Right? So that's one issue. Low blood sugar in terms of um, symptoms is you also may crave sweets. You're irritable if you miss a meal. You're the one who needs two or three or four cups of coffee to get started in the morning, so you're dependent on coffee. You get lightheaded if you miss meals. Uh, eating actually helps to relieve fatigue, right? You're easily shaky. You feel like you're shaking inside, like inward trembling. You also get agitated. You get easily upset. Um, you may get blurred vision. And then when your blood sugar goes low, your memory goes bad. You get poor memory issues, right? So when your blood sugar goes low, the only thing you're really thinking about is, I gotta get some food, I feel shaky, I, need, I feel dizzy, I gotta sit down, uh, give me a chocolate bar, something, uh, to get my blood sugar up. So when you have these fluctuations of blood sugar, whether it's high or low, you're not delivering the right amount of sugar to your cells or to your brain. Therefore, you will feel fatigue. So when you look at the physiology, right, you have your bloodstream or your arteries with all the blood uh, flows. When you eat a high carbohydrate meal, right, meaning you know, pasta, sugars, cookies, whatever it is, it breaks down into basically sugar or glucose. That glucose needs to be taken up by the cells. Your cells need to take it and utilize it for energy production. Right? And what brings it into the cells is something called insulin, which is produced in your pancreas. So your insulin will open up the, the cell so the glucose can get in. In the case of high blood sugar, there's a lot of insulin. So every time you have a high carbohydrate meal, there's an influx of insulin that comes along. And then the cells become resistant to it. There's so much insulin floating around, your cell goes, hey, I don't want to open up right now. I have enough sugar in me, right? And they don't want to open up to the insulin. And then the sugar will stay in the bloodstream and then convert to fat or 
right? So that's why you get the weight gain initially uh, when you have blood sugar issues, right? It's pretty classic. The, the guys with the big abdomen, um, they drink uh, a beer or two, they have a big meal, and then they sit in front of the TV and they're like, and they fall asleep. That is your classic insulin resistant individual, okay? On the other side, or the flip side, is when you have low blood sugar, right? Every time you have low blood sugar, your cortisol output will increase, right? To produce more sugar from your uh, liver. So whenever you have low blood sugar, you're going to have a burst of cortisol, which can be inflammatory, right? So high levels of cortisol and high levels of insulin can be inflammatory to your body. Therefore, whether it's high sugar or low sugar, it can create inflammatory processes and then because of the uptake or the improper uptake of sugar into our system, you get uh, basically fatigued. So when we look at a patient who has chronic health conditions, let's say it's an autoimmune disease or IBS or one of these uh, uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, you have to take some care of some priorities, right? Anemia is one because you need oxygen we talked about that last week. And the other is blood, blood sugar. You have to be able to manage your blood sugar. We do not want this wild swing of sugar throughout the day followed by cortisol and insulin. All this can be inflammatory. It can make you feel tired. Uh, it's not good for your cardiovascular system. Uh, and it's not great for your brain function. So in terms of fatigue, you have to manage blood sugar. So I just gave you some classic signs of high blood sugar and low blood sugar, right? So in terms of testing, what do we need to do, right? So last week we talked a lot about anemia and all the different tests. So today we're going to talk about some of the tests that we would do if someone, uh, if we suspect that someone had blood sugar issues. So uh, a fasting blood glucose is an important snapshot, right? It's a picture in time. So. Oftentimes what I find is people do not do their blood tests correctly. If you're going to do a fasting blood glucose, it should be between a 10 and a 12 hour fast to get your baseline, right? So you eat dinner, let's say around eight o'clock, seven o'clock, your blood work should be done the, the next morning around seven o'clock, okay? That fasting glucose will help us determine if you have a blood sugar, right, uh, problem. The other thing is hemoglobin A1C. This is a three month average of what your blood sugar is doing. So it's a test that you can't cheat because it, it's a three month average. So you have to be good for three months for it to change. And it gives us a picture, a video of what's going on in terms of blood sugar. So anything above 5.6 is gonna be insulin resistant Right? As you get closer to seven, you're going to be pre-diabetic and diabetes. Uh, it will be down the line. So you want to check glu fasting glucose and you want to check hemoglobin A1C. Okay? Another marker you can check for if you're, if you're still unsure of blood sugar uh, dysregulation is a fasting insulin. Again, it's fasting. And then something called C-peptide. If you can check these numbers, we can determine if you have an insulin issue, if you have a blood sugar issue, or dysregulation issue, right? Another one I like to check is something called LDH, or lactate dehydrogenase. And if that number is quite low, that can be someone who has reactive hypoglycemia or low blood sugar issues. So, if a patient comes in and their fasting blood sugar, right, after a proper fast of 10 to 12 hours, is 110 or 115. Their hemoglobin A1C is, let's say, 6.2, 6.4, right? And their fasting insulin is high. That means they have um, pre-diabetes, diabetes, right? They have issues. If someone comes in and their fasting glucose is below 70, and their hemoglobin A1C is like 4.5, Right? And the lactate dehydrogenase, or LDH, is below 140. Then we're looking at someone who might be 
a reactive hypoglycemic or hypoglycemic. Now, hypoglycemia is not just related to um, uh, sugar intake and so forth. Sometimes people have neurogenic hypoglycemia. It's related to the nervous system, cerebellar issues, a balance problem patients, or people who need excessive fuel um, to, because of the anxiety and, and stress that they have. Uh, they can have low blood sugar signs too. Uh, so it can be neurogenic in nature, not just intake. Right? We like to have the numbers pretty even, right? You ever want your fasting, fasting blood glucose between 80 and say 95, your hemoglobin A1C between uh, 5.12 up to 5.4, um, and that would give us a good number uh, to work with because you need proper sugar delivery as well as you need proper uh, blood flow delivery, right, or oxygen delivery. So it's crucial to get these two components in check, okay? Next week we are going to discuss uh, part uh, number three on our list for fatigue, right? We're going to explain how all these different factors tie into fatigue. If you can't get manage these nine or ten factors, then you're not going to be able to function at a high level. Okay? So my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellence results. And we'll see you next week on Tuesday on the healthy side. Please share and like the video. Therefore, more people can see uh, what we do in our office. Uh, and hopefully everyone gets healthy. All right? We'll see you next week.